Reddit, what is the loneliest thing you've ever done? I was home alone on New Year's Eve. I was playing The Sims in complete darkness. I had a small get-together with some other Sims. As the ball fell, I whispered, Happy New Year, to myself. Edit, I just wanted to thank everyone for their kind words and concerns. It really isn't as bad as many think. I'm more of a homebody who likes to be by myself and play video games anyway. I'm just so happy that my story brought joy to a lot of people. I haven't laughed as much as I have today since I can remember. Oh boy. This thread is going to do some things to me, huh? Well, if this video is shorter than the usual ones, it's because I've had to cut out a bunch because I've been crying. So we'll see what happens. Wish me luck. Story 2. Two weeks ago, I went to an 11.15pm showing of the final Hobbit movie. I was the only person in the theater. I spent 20 minutes finding the perfect seat and seriously contemplated asking them to pause the movie when I went to pee. Holy crap, that movie is long. As I walked out of the theater at almost 2 in the morning, there were no employees in sight. My car was the only one in the lot, and a light snow had recently fallen and was completely untouched. As I was about halfway to my car, I turned around to look at the theater, and all the frontage and interior lights were off. It almost looked like it had been closed all along. Story 3. I used to have a dog named Douglas. He was the child dog of an old relationship. When no one was around, I liked to sing random songs for him, replacing certain words with his name. Turn down for Doug, stairway to Douglas, sweet child of Doug, etc. Anyway, after my ex and I broke up and parted ways, he got all depressed. Between work and graduate school and not really having a yard he could play in, I realized this wasn't the best environment for him. So despite loving that dog more than most people in my life, I called my ex and decided to let her keep him. A little while after he was gone, I caught myself singing Sweet Child of Doug alone in my house and got really sad. This was months ago and I'm still sad about it. Okay, yeah, we got the first tears of the thread. This one is... Oh, what a hard decision to have to make. I think OP made the right decision for the record. Noticing that your pet is just not enjoying life and then doing what's hard but will give them a better life is, I don't know, is really sweet. But oof, that's... That's brutal, OP. Story 4. I inadvertently sent a friend request on Facebook to the wrong person who happened to have the same name as the intended recipient. For whatever reason, that person accepted the request. This person and I have never interacted and don't live anywhere near each other. I now read all of her updates and follow her life story. I've cheered during both of her pregnancies, felt scared when she had to deliver one child two months early, cried when her husband was hurt in Afghanistan, and felt proud when she was accepted to med school. I realized one day that I had invented a completely one-sided friendship with an online stranger, all while sitting at home, alone, in my pajamas. OP, you just made your own reality show, you know that, right? Like, that's what happened here. You followed the life of someone you don't know and probably won't ever know, and also only a very curated portion of it, much like a reality show. You just made your own entertainment. Story 5. During a long stretch of being single, I went to a strip club on Valentine's Day. All of my friends had something going on and I didn't want to be alone. One of the strippers gave me a kiss on the cheek. It left a big red lipstick mark on my face and she whispered in my ear, Hope that doesn't get you in trouble. Yeah, right. If I had someone at home who cared about random lipstick on my face, do you think I'd be at a strip club by myself on Valentine's Day? Ended up going home, getting blackout drunk by myself, and trash-talked young kids on Call of Duty. Now this really is one of the loneliest things in this thread so far. Like, there's something so, I don't know, grounded and real about this of just like, yeah, loneliness will do this. OP, I hope you're doing better now. If not found a partner, at least to just learn to be a little happier with being alone. Because that's possible too. Story 6. My loneliest moment occurred about two years ago. It was during the summer and I had gotten two free tickets to go to the local renaissance fair. I did the only thoughtful thing I could think of. I asked my girlfriend of several years if she wanted to go. She was a teacher and claimed she was too busy preparing for the school year, so she kept stalling and gave me non-committal responses. I asked her if she wanted to go on Friday night. Saturday came and went. I asked her again if she would be game for an hour or two on Sunday for something to do. They were free, so I didn't really care if we stayed for a short amount of time. She claimed again that she was too busy, even after I offered to come help her, and still didn't give me a firm answer. Sunday rolled around and I asked again. She gave me the same routine. It was too short notice to invite anyone else, so I ended up going by myself. While I was walking up to the admission gate to get in, I saw a younger couple getting ready to pay for their tickets. I still had an extra ticket, so I gave it to the couple. They seemed genuinely happy. The situation ignited an intense feeling of sadness. I spent an hour or two wandering around the fair alone. I wasn't happy, and I knew it. Less than a week later, I was single by my own choosing. I, mm, I hate to say it, 
It feels like one of those situations where OP was single for a little longer than they realized. It sounded like their girlfriend was not in it at all. Maybe very stressed from work and everything if we want to give the benefit of the doubt, but this kind of behavior does smell of a relationship about to end, doesn't it? Anyway, OP, I'm glad you made that tough choice because you're probably better off now. Story 7. I would get upset and vent at Cleverbot because I didn't want to bother my friends with my troubles. Also, the only Christmas card I ever get in the mail is from State Farm. Whenever I get it, it makes me feel pathetic since the holidays always bring me down. They usually make me cry because my insurance company is the only entity that bothered to spend 35 cents to say Merry Christmas. That's usually the lowest point of the year because I'm usually drunk from Halloween to Valentine's Day. OP, oh my, OP, oh my. With all due respect, please see a therapist or something. This does not sound healthy. You can be so much happier in life, I promise you. Story 8. When I was in elementary school and high school, I was bullied horribly. When I was about 13, the kids in my class invited me over to go for milkshakes and fries to celebrate the first day of Christmas break. I excitedly told my parents, and they were so happy for me. It seemed like I was finally making friends. Needless to say, they all stood me up. I was too scared to go home and tell my parents that once again I had fallen for their lies, so I stayed out by myself for a couple of hours, ate fries, and drank a milkshake, and felt so alone. Obviously a horrible way to start Christmas break. Story 9. Rented out a restaurant that housed over 70 people after coming back from a deployment so I could spend time with all of my friends and family in one place. After having announced the event for over three weeks, nobody showed up. Having sat there for over two hours waiting, I got up and left. Nobody called or texted to cancel. I still think about that day. Story 10. When I came back from Iraq in 2005, I had been over there for well over a year. Flew all the way back to Germany and got to Frankfurt late. Midnight. We jumped on a bus and drove to the base we lived on and it was snowing outside. They herded us all into the gym and we stood there on the basketball court in formation and they released everyone to their families. I remember standing there watching all these people who were my only family go to their real families and leave. I didn't have anyone there. I just turned around, picked up my ruck and walked the two miles back to my barracks. When I got there, it was completely empty, save for a bed and a six-pack of beer in the fridge. Someone was thinking ahead. I popped open a beer, sat on the bed, and felt like I was supposed to be happy, but I was more lonely than I'd ever been. That feeling never went away. Story 11. When I started high school, I wasn't really friends with anybody. I knew a few guys from middle school, but that was about it. My sister and her friends who knew me were in grade 12 and went to the same school. So for the first month of school, I didn't have anyone to eat lunch with, and I didn't want to sit alone in the cafeteria, and then my sister see that I have no friends. Friends. She would, no doubt, worryingly tell my parents, and I didn't want them to be concerned about my inability to make friends. So I started eating my lunch in the washroom stall, and then moved to secretly eating my lunch in the library. After about a month, I decided to go to the lunchroom, because my teacher let us off like 10 minutes early before the lunch bell. I figured I could go sit and eat my lunch quick before people got there. As I was eating, these black guys were in my gym class came and sat next to me. It was their usual table. They lived in what you would call a hood in my city, although we don't really have a hood, just a place where a lot of low-income families lived. And then soon, the entire row filled up with guys from that hood, and they basically went on as usual, making jokes. They knew I was there, and even though I wasn't talking at all, they involved me. I ate lunch with them every day for the next two years after that. I feel like this kind of goes to show that to make friends, you do have to put yourself in situations where you can. People, by and large, are more accepting than you think. Of course, there are stinkers out there, for sure. But there will always, I don't know, I like to believe there would always be someone who's willing to, I don't know, just hang out, maybe reach out an arm, whatever. But I am not going to ignore how hard it is to get that ball rolling. I'm glad OP sort of stumbled into it, because it sounds like their experience at school probably improved a lot after that. Story 12. Three years ago, my wife of eight years suddenly left me. After a few months of voluntary seclusion, I decided on one final hurrah to my loneliness. I took my wedding ring, cost 900 euros, gold was worth about 200 euros, and took it to a gold buyer. Sold the ring for exactly 29 95, leaving the gold buyer flabbergasted, of course. Then I went to the liquor store across the road and bought a bottle of Johnny Walker, 29 95. Went back home, closed all the curtains, locked my doors, played my depressing music playlist on repeat, and turned off my telephone. With all that done, I opened up the bottle and downed it in, oh, about an hour or so. The rest of the night was spent crying drunkenly, freaking out, bashing my head into the wall, and other such pleasantries. I have never felt as lonely as that night. The following day, I woke up with a huge hangover, which passed in due time. I got on my motorcycle and drove to my parents for dinner. My period of seclusion now ended. Story 13. On my commute home one day around 15 years ago, I came across a Lhasa Apso mix that had been hit by a car and left for dead. No caller, 
no one looking for it. It was cute and kind, licking my hand when I came close, but its neck was broken, and its back was broken in at least two places. No one else was around, so I gently picked it up and brought it to the sidewalk. I was a paramedic at the time and had some tools on my belt, but I knew little of canine anatomy. As such, I was about to cross in a territory I didn't know. I knew that I had to put the dog down. What I didn't know was what would be the best way to do that. I tried gently smothering it, but could not cover all of its mouth and nose with my hands. It was awkward with weird angles everywhere. Next, I tried to use my Leatherman's pliers to close off its windpipe, and the poor guy was even licking my hand while I did that. Unfortunately, that didn't work either. So I took off my uniform shirt to get at my undershirt, which I then used for the smothering. It was heartbreaking, especially when I felt that little guy twitching, and then it was done. Shirtless, I looked all around me. Not a soul in sight. Not even a child on a bicycle. The pain and anguish of what I had just done was mine alone to bear. Even though I had done the right thing, it did not feel good. I wrapped it in my undershirt and took it home to bury in the backyard. I left a note on a fence near where I found it along with my phone number, but no one ever called. I don't even know what that sweet thing's name was. I... I hate this story because, look, my brain knows, it's like, yeah, sure, OP probably did the right thing, right? But my heart is like, oh, you could've tried, you could try to save it, I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm, wow, this one made me like, cry. Cool, cool, we're moving on. Story 14. I used to spend my break times and lunch times at school sitting in a toilet cubicle playing crappy games on my old Nokia and eating my lunch. I never had any friends during school and I was bullied by what felt like three quarters of it, so I never enjoyed free time at all. Some days I would mix it up and walk laps around the school until my next lesson, but that ended when someone decided to pour a one liter bottle of Red Bull over my head, bringing back some crap memories, man. Story 15. I picked my college at the last minute in July of 2010, and was unable to find anyone I knew that needed a roommate for the freshman year. I was able to opt out of living in expensive dorms because I had college credit, so I moved into a place on the edge of town with two guys I didn't know. One was a recluse that I saw probably less than 20 times the whole year I lived with him, and the other was a snobby kind of rich boy. We didn't hang out. Our living rooms were a dead zone and everyone spent their time in their bedrooms. I also didn't have a car and had to take a bus to make it to campus. The people I knew from high school weren't really my friends and weren't going to drive me to their parties when they were just going to get drunk, so I had nothing to do each weekend. One Friday night around 9pm, I was watching Magnum Force on my laptop in my dark bedroom. I heard some noise from a party next door and I remember just looking out my window through the shutters for 30 minutes wondering what it would be like to be them. This happened every week. It's just a night that sticks with me the most. Story 16. I live alone. No boyfriend and very few friends. Invited my parents over for Thanksgiving, but they were going on vacation to Tahiti. I ended up getting tiny toy plates, dollhouse silverware, teapots and placemats, and making a Thanksgiving dinner. And I ate with my pet rat, Miley, sitting on the table across from me. Gave her a bath beforehand, of course. She refused to eat out of her tiny plate because she always liked whatever I was eating. So we ended up eating out the same regular-sized plate, Miley and me. Miley, being a small rat, would stand on the edge of my plate and pick up morsels of food with her two tiny hands. Then it became a routine. We would have dinner together. She likes avocado a lot. I make her special salads with lettuce, cheddar, avocado, and goldfish crackers. The loneliest person makes the happiest rat. Story 17. When I was 18, I bought my friend a pack of magic cards for Christmas. I was going to give it to him about a week early because that's when I was moving out on my own out of state and wouldn't realistically see him again. His folks really disliked me, and when they found out I was going to pop over to give him a gift, they had a mandatory family outing. I stood on his doorstep just ringing the bell to an empty house for like five minutes in disbelief before getting a lift back to my U-Haul and leaving the state. I spent the next week in my new apartment alone. On Christmas, I ate across the table from the cards, imagining that my friend was there. Then opened the cards for him, oohed and awed over them, and then went to bed. It's interesting, because, you know, when people are alone and they say they do things, you're not always sure if they actually do them. But when we're talking about loneliness, I believe them a lot more. Like, I can really see this happening, can't you? In fact, I can kind of see myself doing it. If I were in that situation, 18, alone on Christmas for the first time, unable to give my friend that I may never see again a present, yeah, loneliness really brings out the drama in people. Story 18. This is the loneliest thing I've ever done, followed by the most loneliest moment of my life. Last month, I paid an escort to take my virginity. I have always had a hard time fitting in at school, work with my family, and making friends. I never had someone in my life that I could talk to about the things I like. I wanted to at least take part in the banging conversation with people because there's a lot of social pressure if you don't share something. If you don't share something, you just end up looking like that pathetic sack of lard who's never banged. So I went online and spent $1,600 for four hours with an escort. I had no expectations for the night other than I knew I was going to bang. I just wanted to know what it was like to kiss and bang someone. 
I thought it would just be like most of my everyday normal interactions. Me pretending I cared about deflated balls, what Obama is doing right now, things like that. I had no idea that I would enjoy the chit-chat, so when she showed up, we chatted for a bit. We talked about what I have and haven't done. I hadn't even held hands before. This girl was near my age, I'm 22, and we had so much in common. In my life, I never thought I would run into someone where I could talk about classical music, ballets, and things of that nature. For the first time in my life, I had an in-depth conversation about the Rite of Spring by Stravinsky, and the effects it had on the music world. I forgot what she was, and I had the night of my life. We spent more time talking and sharing stories. I could have listened about her time in the ballet for months. Once she left, I sat on the bed thinking about what happened. I felt like a shell, a ghost, fake and defeated. I didn't want her to leave. I didn't sleep at all that night. I cried so much and felt so alone. If I had a way out, I would have taken it that night. My mind was just trying to end itself with all the thoughts I was having. I had to pay someone to enjoy time with me. I had to pay someone to care about what I thought. I had to pay someone to care about me, and it was only for four hours. That was all I could think of, and holy crap, it sucked and sucks now. At that time, I would have done anything to get those four hours of pure joy back. I had never enjoyed spending time with someone that much. It had nothing to do with the physical part of it, it was just the emotional part. The only way I could crawl out of that hole was to think of how awesome it will be when that's all for real. OP, I just want to say, you're right. When it's for real, it will feel amazing, even better than it did with her. I guarantee it. And it will happen, too. As long as you put the effort towards it and just, I don't know, I guess that really is the main thing, just put the effort towards it. And that's different for every person, so I'm not going to say, oh, do this, uh, hit the gym, or whatever, no. But that kind of really special connection, I have full confidence that you will experience it. And that goes for anyone listening who might be in a similar boat. There are people out there for you to connect with. I am fully confident of that, however naive that might be. And everyone out there, it's okay to be lonely. If you're lonely listening to this, I hope I at least helped a little bit. Because hey, it's not some AI voice reading a story, it's me. I'm a real dude sitting in a booth right now in front of a computer and a microphone. And I'm reading these stories, and I'm putting my heart and soul into it, so I hope at least a little of that comes off. And if your loneliness ever impacts your life significantly in any way, whether you have thoughts of harming yourself or just having a hard time doing work or anything like that, I would encourage seeing a professional about it, or at least considering it. Because being happy is something that you deserve. It's something we all deserve. But for now, that's all the stories we have. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. And I know I say that every time, but I do really mean it. And I will see you in the next one.